Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a new gaming mouse from Logitech. This is the G Pro, and a lot of you were asking about this the other day when I had it in one of my gaming laptop reviews, so I figured I would bump it up on the schedule so you can see what it's all about. Now this is a lower cost mouse. It's about $70 versus the $150 we've been seeing on a lot of the gaming mice we've looked at recently, so it's still going to cost you a little bit, uh, and it doesn't look like it's all that much, but it actually performs very nice. I'm quite pleased with how it feels and how well it performs. We're going to get into how it works in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, let's take a quick look at the hardware now. There isn't much to look at actually because it's a very simple product, which is sometimes a good thing. Uh, it weighs about three ounces or 83 grams, and that's why it gives you the impression when you first take it out of the box that it should probably come off an office supply shelf and not from a premium gaming department perhaps, but uh, once you get into it, you'll start to appreciate its features a bit more. Uh, the first thing that sets it apart is that it has a nice cloth braided cable here so it doesn't tangle up on you. you. Get about 10 feet or so of length to it, so it should definitely get around the back of your gaming tower or something, depending on where you're running it to. Uh, the report rate on this is one millisecond over that uh, USB port. The optical sensor here on the bottom runs from 200 to 12,000 DPI. You can set one of these buttons in the software to uh, stage through different DPI settings so you can make the mouse uh, less or more sensitive on the fly just by pushing a button without having to jump back into the control panel. On the back you have some lighting. The, uh, the logo here along with the swoosh are configured together. So if you turn the logo off you lose the swoosh. You can't uh, configure them independently. I have it right now just cycling through some different colors but you can set a static color if you wish. And the buttons of course can all be configured including the regular mouse buttons. So you could turn your left mouse click into some kind of crazy macro if you want to do that. Uh, but you do have a few extra buttons on here to configure macros if you want to keep the mouse function the same. So the scroll wheel here will click. Uh, you can set up this button as well as these two to do something different as well. So that is the basic hardware. Let's get into the software configuration now so you can see how you can make it work with your games. All right, so let's step through some of the more important parts of the control panel here. The first thing that's really nice is that the mouse has onboard memory. So if you configure some macros and some other stuff while you're at one computer, you can unplug it from that computer, plug it into another one without the software installed, and the mouse will retain all of its settings. So you have some flexibility uh, with that on there, which is always very nice to see. I'm going to switch over to this screen because this is where you're going to spend a bulk of your time, I think. Uh, this is where you will configure the buttons and some of the DPI settings. Now you can see on the right hand side there we have uh, the DPI uh, graph and if I click on this center button right now because it's configured to swap out the DPI settings, you can see it's scrolling through a whole bunch of different uh, DPI configurations. So when I'm at the high DPI here, the mouse is very sensitive so it doesn't take much movement as you can see to move this window around, but if I switch it down to the lowest setting here, it takes a lot more movement to do it. So you can see how that DPI can be very useful depending on uh, what you're doing in your particular game. And again, you've got everywhere from anywhere from 200 to 12,000. So you can get an idea as to how sensitive you can make the mouse. Now you can also configure these buttons to do whatever you want. So if you don't want your left mouse button to be a left click, you can have it be something else. I'm going to click on the forward button here and show you some of the options that you have. So for example, I could map a left click uh, to the forward mouse button if I wish. It also tells me which mouse buttons are already have that assigned. Uh, so you do have things like DPI up or down. Uh, you can even do a sniper uh, kind of thing where you hold down the button to get a more sensitive uh, mouse movement and then release it to go back to where it's currently set to. You have some media controls in here too, but you can also set individual keystrokes. You can even do something like a macro here. So I could start recording and maybe what I'll do is just type out my name here and I think I got a typo in there, but it doesn't matter. So I'm going to bring over Notepad right now, and uh, when I push on that uh, button there, the forward button, uh, what you'll see here is it'll type out my name as I'm doing that. So you can imagine in a game you could have it uh, maybe switch out a weapon and then fire it or do something like that. You can really set up a string of commands to happen when you push one of those buttons. And down here are the lighting effects, and we've got it right now set to color cycle. And if I switch back to my other view here, you can see I can change the rate of cycling if I want. I can make it crazy fast, or I can slow it down, of course. Uh, there's a breathing option also where it kind of fades the colors in and out uh, or what you can do is just turn off this feature completely and set a static color so let me just turn it off here and show you how that works I'll turn that off I can maybe select a preset color here off the wheel 
and get that, or I can adjust it more finely if I wish as well. So you do have a lot of different options for uh, setting color. Now what's funny is you see it pulsing right now on camera. Uh, it isn't actually doing that to my eyes. It's the way the, uh, the, the refresh rate on the LED is interacting with my camera. So this is actually not a, a blinking uh, mode here. It actually is not blinking in my eyes as I look at it right now, but this is just a little artifact of the LED light on there. All right, let's take a look at some gameplay footage now. I'm running the new version of Doom here. What I did is I configured uh, this button over here to be what they call a DPI shift. And this is essentially the sniper mode. So as you can see, as I'm moving the mouse around right now, it doesn't take much to get a lot of movement going. What I could do though is hold down this button and now you can see it's very slow and precise. So you can set up one of these sniper buttons on there to do that. Now I also configured this button to send the key press of F. So in this Doom game, uh, the F key gives you the melee command here. So I can push that down and you can see uh, he does his melee move with the button here or I can hit the F key on the keyboard if I want. So uh, that is some of the things that you can do in the software. And the nice thing is you can set it up on a per game basis. So you can have different profiles set up for different games and have these buttons do different things depending on the game that you're in. So that is the Logitech G Pro. And my mouse preferences tend to lean towards lightweight and simple. And this one certainly uh, checks both of those boxes off for me. Your mileage and preferences may vary. So this is one of those things where it's a very personal decision. You may want to go somewhere uh, where you can try this mouse along with some other ones to get a good feel for it. But I think if you like lightweight and simple, uh, this one will be a good choice. Very nice software configuration on it. Handles really nicely, very precise. You get a lot of nice DPI settings on it that you can change. And I'm really uh, quite pleased with the simplicity of its macro functionality. This is Lon Seidman, thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.